We've come to Frankfurt in Germany to Eurobike, arguably the largest bike show in the world to find new and interesting cycling and triathlon tech like this. Let's go. Okay, so we've got a brand new trainer here from Elite. It's a direct drive trainer. This was first seen a couple of weeks ago at the Tour de France, used by some teams in the warm-up pre-TT stage. Um, and this is their top level trainer. So this is coming above the Diretto, which was previously their top level trainer. Now, the notable things with this trainer or advancements is its accuracy. It's now accurate to around 1%. They also say it's quicker in terms of its responsiveness with that power. So when you're trying to get into that super tuck position on Zwift, they say it will happen that much quicker. They say it's also auto calibrated in terms of its powers. You don't have to do any manual calibration as you would have had to on the Diretto before. And they've also upgraded the feet. So we've got these kind of softer feet that we've seen some other brands using. You can change these out for different firmness. It just gives you a little bit of give when you're getting up out of the saddle and whatnot. And finally, also they are using regenerated plastics within the production of this, which is obviously a lovely touch. Wow, this is an exciting day for me because this is my first time actually seeing this bike in the flesh. This is, of course, the bike that Christian Blumenfeld rode on to his win at the Ironman World Championships and to that sub seven attempt. It is, in fact, actually the bike he rode on at the Ironman World Championships. It was then taken away, repainted with this gold finish and then used as a spare on top of the car at the sub seven attempt. So he didn't actually ride at the sub seven, but it was there and ready to be used. Now, it's been really interesting actually looking at how they designed this frame and the bike and talking with the engineers because actually one of the priorities with this bike was making it fully integrated out of the box so that you didn't need to add additional storage for fueling or hydration. They wanted that all built in, ready to go. And obviously all that aerodynamic testing to have been done with that finished product. So they made all that storage in the down tube here. So whilst you may have thought that the top tube was removed for aerodynamic reasons, it actually wasn't. It was more for function and practicality so that they can access this storage more easily. And that is actually all incredibly easy to remove. You can obviously refill on the way, but you can actually remove all these parts. And the hosing comes through this nose cone, which is also very well designed. You can remove that very easily. It clips in seamlessly. And then that hosing runs down through into the bladder very nicely. You've also got these horizontal seat stays that come off obviously for aerodynamic reasons for that airflow with an incredibly thin profile here at the back. And then the forks. Well, this is an interesting discussion with the engineer because actually they initially started with this design for ease of adjustability. So whereas normally and previously on their Trinity, you had to change out the bolts and remove loads of shims to increase the height or lower it, they want to make that easier. So they've actually got these longer bolts that come right down into the forks. And then these adapters or spacers can actually just be removed sideways nice and easily rather than having to remove the whole system and then replace. So that is actually the reason why these forks started off this design. They initially had a bit of a curvature in them. They didn't like the look of that. They tried changing it and actually found out it was more aerodynamic. So that is actually the real reason. Uh, with that, they've also worked closely with Sync and they've created this almost custom aero bar and they've made it incredibly adjustable. So they've got all these different adapters. They can do a zero or 10 degree tilt. And then also you can include these five degree spaces as well to increase that further. And then also, in addition to all of that, we've got this storage unit on the non-drive side of the bike where you can have all your spares and uh, Allen keys, etc. And then finally, they've got this brand new four-spoke disc brake wheel and also the lovely disc wheel. The Shimano released their 12-speed Dura-Ace and Altegra Di2 group sets around a year ago. And the third tier, or 105 group set, 12-speed Di2 has been hotly anticipated and it was released around three weeks ago and here it is in the flesh. Look at it. This is around 90 grams heavier than the mechanical version. It's, it's a little bit bulky but 
far more affordable, which is the exciting thing. And I'm sure even for you triathletes out there riding TT bikes, this is still very, very interesting. We do obviously also have the Ultegra version over here, which is very nice. But in addition to that, we also have the power meter, the new Ultegra power meter. It's a crank-based power meter. But yeah, really nice to see these guys in the flesh. Okay, we're at the Ceramic Speed stand. Now, we have actually already featured the new SPW jockey wheel system with the aero cover. But what's cool about this one, it's on Omar Goldstein's bike, and it's a real nod to Ceramic Speed's origin, which is Denmark, with the Danish flag on them. But we've got something new we're going to have a look at now. Because released today, we have their Explorer OSPW jockey wheel system, the off-road system with gravel kind of getting more performance. So this literally has been released today. And then we've also got this new colorway. They've just got a hundred of each of these colors. Fwah. Right, I'm now at the Celitalia stand. Now we all love a bit of 3D printed tech. We have a 3D printed saddle. This is the SLR Boost 3D. Now this exactly mimics the profile and the cushioning on the previous SLR Boost 3D. But what's different about this and the benefit of 3D printing it is that they're able to increase the firmness and softness in certain areas and specific and important areas of the saddle to make it that bit more comfortable and obviously incredibly light. It's cool. And actually, it also comes in a couple of different options for carbon rails, titanium rails. Also, whilst we're here, because I think this is really cool, we've got this green tech, which Salitalia are pushing at the moment. Now, these are produced with zero waste. They're pollutant-free in their production method. And they're also striving to make them 100% recyclable, which they say they are theoretically, but they're also trying to push to make them returnable to Cell Italia. So you can send them back nice and easily to them, and then they will do all the hard work and recycle it at their end. And because we're here, we haven't actually featured this before. We've also got the ID Match. Now, the ID Match biking fit system isn't actually necessarily anything new, but it's really quite impressive. Now, this is a markerless system, so you don't have to have spots or markers on you at all. The cameras do it all for you. So you can stand up on that platform and you'd actually start off the bike. You do three different positions, feet together, feet apart, and then standing side on, bending down towards your toes which I won't embarrass myself trying to do. And that will hopefully predict or work out which saddle you'll need. You then jump onto the system and then work out the positioning for your bike and also further help with that saddle positioning. Clever stuff. All right, a little Brucey bonus as well. As a left, they decided to actually measure up my foot. So I've actually been given a cycling footbed. So it matches kind of the art shape of my foot. They've also, with that, been able to tell me my cleat position too. So thorough. Well, I'm at Profile Design, and this is exciting because they've got a ton of new stuff. So, where do I start? I'm going to go with the base bars to start off with. So, we've now got their Wing 20C Plus base bar, which is an advancement on their older 20C. And what's different about this is you can literally flip it and get yourself a 20 mil adjustment in that. So really cool. Whilst we're on this bike as well, or this setup, we've also got these new aero bars. So these are the 43 ASC uh, aero bars. They're a slightly more ergonomic design in terms of their grip and also how they come around and hug the forearm and also allow you to rest that forearm into that. So really nice. And then coming back from that, we've also got some new elbow cup. So these, again, a slight announcement on the older ones in terms of their length. So they're increasing the length of that so you can rest your elbows, your forearms a little bit more. Here, we've got a slightly shallower curvature and on here, got a little bit more of a curvature. So you're really locking you in so you're nice and stable. Also, we've got hydration systems. Now, we've already spoken about the Area Ultimate hydration system, which featured on this bike before. It's been out for a few years now. It's an incredible system because it is an aftermarket product, but really integrates into your bike. It's a very clever, clever system in how it sort of attaches onto the stem. They've got a new model again. This one is slightly more truncated. It's slightly shorter in its design, but you've got three options in terms of its depth. So this can suit a different head tube depth so you can get the bottle that suits your bike. And what's good about this is it doesn't interfere with the aero bars. And again, it locks into that stem in a really clever way the Aero Ultimate does. Talking of the stem, we actually do have a new stem too, which I've got in my hands here. So 
This is their new stem. It's actually got the tri-specific cap on the front here. Again, that allows you to add that cap on so you can put the hydration system on. But on the back, we've got this little cap here. It allows you to route the cables through the stem. So you get that really clean aerodynamic stem and set up at the front end. Also got some new angled adapters for those aero bars. And then the grand finale, the big daddy. This isn't actually released yet. This is coming out later this year. It's the Wing Ultimate and it's a really neat base bar. And this is fully integrated. And I gotta say, it looks mean. Well, this is very civilized. I found myself a seat to rest my legs, a nice little bar and some new helmets. These are two brand new helmets currently being ridden on at the Tour de France by Jumbo Visma. Uh, they are the Laser Volante Kinetic Core and the Victor Kinetic Core. Now the Kinetic Core is a type of protection within the helmet which they've actually built into the design of the helmet rather than an add-on such as MIPS that we often see in helmets. By building it in, it actually has allowed them to save weight and also reduce the amount of EPS or plastic used in the helmet which is a big bonus. But as I say, we've got two models here. We've got the Volante, which is the longer, more aero version. So as you can see here, very aggressive helmet. We've also just shoved that out of the way. We've got this slightly shorter tail helmet, which may be preferable for triathlon with sort of the movement we might get in our heads over a 90 or 100K leg. And then finally, we've got this very mean visor that sort of wraps all the way around the helmet. It looks quite Star Trooper-esque. That is removable. It's got four magnet points, but also it's got these little latches that go into the vents on the front there, which as many people have probably experienced before with the magnet visors, they can fall off. So yeah, neat addition to the design there. Right, I'm with the classified stand who really kind of jumped on the scene a couple of years ago and have really kind of revolutionized gear shifting with their power shift hub. But I've got beside me right here. What it does is, does away with the front mech or two chain rings up front, which means that you are not only making the bike more aerodynamic, but also meaning that you can now kind of shift under load between essentially that big ring and small ring, but it's all built into the hub here. But what is really exciting about this update to their system is that previously it was just available on their classified wheels. That has now been broadened. They're working with a number of different wheel companies, Mavic, Envy, Reynolds, and there's more to come. And now you can actually purchase that brand's wheels with the classified hubs built into them rather than trying to either buy the classified hubs or retrospectively build them in. So really exciting. The thing we're all waiting for though is a disc wheel. Yeah, I mean, this whole kind of optimization shouts TT or triathlon racing. So yeah, can't wait to see the disc wheel. Right, it's a brand new disc wheel from Fulcrum. It's the Speed 360 released just a couple of weeks ago, which they say is the lightest disc wheel out there at 935 grams. And I've got to say, it feels incredibly light. The way in which they've achieved that is by hand building each disc wheel, which they say takes around a day to complete half a disc wheel. So sadly, these aren't available to mass market just yet. Um, these are only available to pro riders. But the way in which they, they've got that weight down is actually through an interesting tensioning process. So what they do is they have the spokes going in, they tension it up, which they can personalize to each rider or each weight or the way in which you prefer that stiffness of the wheel. Then they remove those spokes. So it's completely hollow in here. And not just part way as some disc wheels will have. They have like a deep rim with a disc wheel sort of attached on the outer. This is completely hollow all the way up to the outer rim. Right, I'm at the Jabirmized stand now, and whilst they haven't necessarily got anything new on their stand, it is a really interesting bit of tech. Now, what they specialize in is essentially pressure mapping those contact points that you have with the bike. So specifically, you can see on this bike here, we've got some pressure mapping devices on the elbow cups and also the saddle. And what's really cool about these is not only do you do this on the turbo train? You can actually do this out in the real world. I guess ideally on a velodrome, we'd be going round and round, controlled conditions. You can do CDA testing, but also the pressure mapping with that. So they've got the elbow cups, the saddle, and then from that, they then can tell you how to adjust your position or what you may need to change on your bike to make it more comfortable, more stable, or make yourself more aerodynamic. And then with that, 
because they have collected tens of thousands of data over the years, they've actually been able to create their own saddles. You can see a whole array on the wall behind me. So you can then swap out the different saddles or even without the testing, you can try out their saddles. So yeah, pretty cool. They've also got insoles. And then more lastly, they've got these. So they're actually doing their own elbow cups and pads. Now the elbow cups are injection molded. They're a one size sort of fits all elbow cup. But what's really cool with these is that the pads are customized. So again, from the pressure mapping, they may be able to figure out whether you need a slightly thicker part of the pad on the outside, thinner at the bottom. So rather than it being one thickness throughout, they can actually start to customize it through different parts. They can dampen it in different bits. They can make it shallower. And you can actually see behind me, they're 3D printing some right now. What a day. There is so much tech in this place and so much more to cover. So stay tuned for another video coming tomorrow. But let us know what your favorite tech is in the comment section down below. And don't forget to give it a thumbs up, give it a like and subscribe.